Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This is the Procon Geek and in today's video, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about what is the middle strip and what is the column strip and just clarify a bit and help you understand further because in the previous video we talked about how to design a fly slab or rather I introduced you to the design of fly slabs using AutoCAD and Procon. So some of you got lost. Some of you didn't quite understand what I was doing. So what I wanted to do is just answer the question is what exactly is a middle strip and what is a column strip? So without wasting too much time, let's just get right into the content on the video and clear some A on what is a middle strip and what is a column strip. Even if you're a beginner, this will definitely help you if you have never seen any of my videos and you're just looking for information on the middle strip and column strip. So without wasting too much time, let's just get right into the video. Okay, so as I told you in the introduction, today we just need to talk about the column strip and the middle strip so that we clarify, so that you have a better understanding of what is happening when you're trying to design flash slabs. Because no matter what software you try to use or how you try to calculate or even manually, if you don't understand some of the principles of what the column strip and middle strip are, you are definitely not going to do anything worthwhile. So to try and clear this in less than 15 minutes, first thing that you need to note is they say a column strip is a flat slab. Okay, rather a column strip in a flat slab is the one part put at the inside while center strip is put among two segment strips. Now, to be honest, if you're new, this doesn't really make sense. What are they trying to say? You don't even understand. You know, what I'm trying to say is, if you're someone seeking to understand what is a column strip and what is a middle strip, this definition doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, not to give any hate to all the engineers who came before us and who decided to write books and put this definition as it is, it doesn't really make sense. So what I'm trying to do is um, let me break it down for you as probably you're a beginner so that you best understand what a column strip is and middle strip is. So. Uh, over here we have I have we have already drawn the middle strip and column strip but you need to understand it from the basics from the very start what happens or you need to understand what happens or from the very start when you have a flat slab so normally in the real world this is what you have you have your flat slab layout this means that you just have a slab that is supported on columns in this case I have four examples for you a 20 by 10 meter slab right which is a b c d and one two three as the grid lines then we have a 20 by 12 meter slab, right, which has same proportions, but the only difference is in the first one, this was 10 meters this side, so this were divided into 5 meters and 5 meters. Remember, I'm using metric, so in metric, we draw everything to the nearest millimeter, so 5 meters is equal to 5,000 meters, so don't can get confused with these units. Next, uh, I told you we have a 20 by 12 meter slab, so this one is 20 meters this side, and 12 meters this side, 12 divided by 2, you get 6 and 6. Next, what you have is a 20 by 20 slab. So on this side is 20 meters divided into 5 meter segments. And at this side, it is divided into 4 meter segments. As you see, it's 4,000. So this is definitely, uh, it's actually supposed to be 20 meters by, let me check my, it's supposed to be 16, 20 by 16, because 1, 2, 3, 4 gives you 16. So Please forgive this. Let's just change this to 20 by 16 and this becomes 16 meters, right? And then lastly but not least, we actually now have the 20 by 20 meters. Or should I say, is it 20 by 20 or it is still 20 by 16? Well, as I see, it is still 20 by 16, but don't worry, you're going to understand this. So in this case, this spot is 3,000, this one is 5,000, this one is 6,000, and this one is 2,000, all to give you 16,000 which is 16 meters so we just have to change this now to 16 again and ignore all the things that we have there so to do that so that we quickly understand please forgive me for this little error that okay but it will not change a lot of things it will just help us to understand what we're going to do so in this case all i wanted to do was to show you that we have four different layouts to our name right or arranged in different settings all have a different arrangement of the segments that are going to be dividing them. So what I'm doing is I'm just making sure I clear up on this. And then this is also good so that you see I am human and I also make mistakes. Now that we've cleared it up, we have a 20 by 10 meter slab. Then we have a 20 by 12 meter slab. And we have a 20 by 16 meter slab. And we have a 20 by 16 meter slab as well, but all in different arrangements. So in this arrangement, we have 3,000. 5,000, 6,000, and 2,000, right? And in this one, we have it equally divided into 4,000 sections. Now, 
What do you do in real life when you get such layouts? The first thing that you would want to do to understand where the column strip and middle strip comes from is you take your slabs and then you copy them to the side and you create what you call midpoint. So now remember, for example, in the first slab where you have a 20 by 10 meter slab, remember, and we're just going to be analyzing for one side, which is the AOX side, which is the longer side as opposed to the shorter side. So in this case, what you do is you create a midpoint. In this case, if you check to the original, the distance between the two grid lines or the two supports was 5,000. So by creating a midpoint, you're just bisecting these lines in between or uh, into a half. And in this case, you'll be creating midpoints that are 2,500 from each point and 2,500 from each point. Same applies for the other panel or segment as well. It is the distance between the two columns is 5,000. So you just divide it into half and you have 2,500 and 2,500. Now, when you go to the 20 by 12 meter slab, same thing applies, but this time around you have a 6,000 meter wide or long slab panel. And what you do to create the midpoint, all you have to do is divide it by half. And this means you have 30,000 on one side and 30,000 on one side. Same applies for this section as well. You have 3,000 on one side and 30,000 on one side. Next, when you go to the 20 by 16 meter slab, but this time around, this one is divided equally. You have 4,000, 4,000, 4,000, and 4,000. So this, to create the midpoint, it's quite simple as well. All you have to understand is this one is snapped to the wrong point. It's supposed to be snapped to the midpoint or the grid line. So remember, your grid lines are in magenta. So what you're going to do is you offset those lines as well or create the midpoints or just bisect them. In this case, 4,000 divided by 2, you get 2,000. So it's 2,000 throughout because all of them are symmetrical, right? But now a different scenario comes when you have this 20 by 16 meter slab. In this case, the first slab panel, right, is going to be 3,000 by 5,000. And in this other one, it's 5,000. This other one is 6,000. And this other one is 2,000. So what do you do? For example, in this case, where the distance between the two columns is 2,000, it all means the midpoint that you create will be 1,000 from this side and 1,000 from this side. And as you can see, we have created the midpoint. Same thing applies when you have 6,000 between the two columns. All it means is the midpoint will be 3,000 from one grid line and 3,000 from one grid line. Next, when you have 5,000 as the distance between the two columns, it just means your midpoint will be 2,000 from one grid line and 2,500 from one grid line. Uh, sorry, 2,500 from one grid line and 2,500 from one grid line. And when your distance is now 3,000, as in this case, the distance will be 1,500 from one grid line and 1,500 from the other grid line. So I hope you understand how to create the midpoints and how it becomes different. So you always create the midpoint depending on what the distance between the two columns is or the two supports is. In this case, it's a flat slab, so it always be between the two columns. Remember, in a flat slab, the slab always sits on a column. Now, once you're done creating these midpoints, the next thing you want to do is to create what we call slab strips. This is how you create a slab strip. Now for the 20 by 10 meter, after creating your panel, the good thing is always to start at the externals. In this case, you go to where the external columns are and then you create your first slab strip. So hopefully if you just look at this arrangement, you see how each slab strip is created. At the external columns, they will only be surrounded by one slab strip, but all the columns in the middle where you have a continuous edge, they will always be supported by a one strip to this side and the other strip to the side. And then it's added together. As you can see, this in the white hatch is combined and that becomes its own slab strip. So for example, for this 20 by 10 meter slip, as you can see, you have A, B and C, and this is a slab strip, slab strip, and slab strip. And in this case, this one is 2,500, this one is 5,000, and this one is 2,500 in width. Now, what do you happens when you have the 20 by 12 meter slab as well? Same thing happens. You have A, B, and C, and in this case, this one is just 3,000, this one is 6,000, and the other one is 3,000, right? Remember, because all of this is created from where the midpoints were coming from. Now, in the other case now, when you have a 20 by 16 meter slab, now what has just happened is the number of middle columns has just increased. So in this case, you always start with the externals, which I have in orange, as these are also symmetrical, right? And you create your slab strips. In this case, we have strip A. And lastly, but not least, we have strip E. Then we also have strip D and strip C and strip B. So you have to understand 
this is the third step that you do and what you're doing is you're creating what we call slab strips this is all done whilst you are on the route to create the column and middle strips so remember the definition was pretty tricky for us to understand so we're now trying to make this understandable in the way of visual illustration so in this other cases where where you have a 20 by 16 meter slab same applies happens but this time around you have 3000 right so the first strip a will be 1500 and remember this side this time around this side was 1500 and this side was 2500 so this strip in total becomes a slab strip which is b but it's 1500 plus 2500 to give you 4000 same applies goes when you create C, D, and your E. So in this case, for C, you have 3,000 by 2,500 to give you 5,500. And when you get D, what you have is you have a 1,000 and 3,000 on one end, and that gives you 4,000. And E is an external strip. So you, I think by now you understand how to come up with an external strip. So once you have your slab strips as we did which we have abled a b c d all for the different situations that we have the next step what you do now is to choose a single strip that you want to start with or that you want to start analyzing in this case for the first uh, slab we chose b then for the second slab we also chose b again then for the third slab we chose a c and e so all you can do is so that you don't get distracted we remove this one and for the last one, we chose B, right? C, D, and we left out E. So we are going to be singling out those strips and seeing how you come up with the column and the middle strip so that you now get an understanding of what the column and middle strip is. But all of what we've been doing is important so you understand how middle strips or how they actually define middle and column strip. So for the first example, the 20 by 10 meter slab. Once we isolated strip B, this is what we need to delete. So you remove A, B, and C. What you now do is you remove this hatch, right? Well, let me now just repeat how I came up with this. So what happens is you isolate everything, right? Let me remove those two lines so that you understand the coming up of the middle and the column strip. So what happens is you have this slab strip that you have isolated, which is B. Then in this case, once you isolate the two strips, what you now need to do is you need to know the distance from the column, in this case, from our column to the edge of that strip. In this case, it's 2,500. And if we also check from this side to this side, it is 2,500, right? The next step now that you do is to create middle strips, right? Or to create midpoints. And in this case, the midpoint, if it is 2,500, is going to be 1,250. And in this case, you have done that. And then let me just match the properties so that you have a difference between the edge of the strip, which is in red, and the midpoints. Once you have created this midpoints, the next push is to isolate or create your column strip. So the part that I am now hatching is what they refer to as the column strip. And let me just match the properties there. And there you go. This, ladies and gentlemen, is basically what they were trying to say when they were saying the column strip in a flat slab is the one put at the inside while center strip is put among two segment strips. As you can see, really still doesn't make any sense. But basically, all I'm saying is what we have done, this entire process where we came from just having the layout, then we created our midpoints. Then we created our slab strips, A, B, and C. Then we isolated one slab strip. And then in the end, we came up with this little area that we have, right? Which in fact is going to be, let me just highlight it to you. You, you go, you step 1250 to this point, right? And you also step 1250 to this point. Now, by doing that, you've successfully created your column strip then everything that remains in that slab strip remember this red indicates your slab strip and this is just your middle strip so everything that remains that i am now shading right now as i do this right let me just match the properties this is sign and this is now what you call the middle strip so everything that is in orange 
is the column strip and everything that is outside becomes the middle strip. So this is basically the process of what they are trying to say. So they will be just telling you this is the column strip and this is the middle strip. And why is that important? This is important because these two are reinforced differently when you see the analysis and the design, which we are going to do a further do also in the other videos as we continue with the flash step design series, right? So this is it. I've shown you how to do it for the 20 by 10 meter slab. Now what we're going to do, I've done it already for all those other slabs. As you can see, this is just the column strip and everything that remains is the middle strip. There is the middle strip. And in this case where you have this, I had not indicated it, but this is the middle strip. And no, this is the column strip. The middle strip would be anything else that remains outside that in the slab strip. So remember, slab strip and column strip are very different. So this automatically becomes the middle strip. And in this case as well, anything that remains after you shed out your column strip becomes the middle strip as you are seeing me do right now. So hopefully you now understand what is the middle strip and the column strip. But now, if you check correctly in the previous examples, you will see that this distance, right, is equal to 5,000 divided by 4. Because if you divide 5,000 by 4, you get 1, 2, 50, right? And you see the overall length of the column strip is actually 2,500. Let me just show you. In this case, let me just annotate from this point to this point. And if you go, you see it's 2,500 which means it is actually 5,000 divided by two. So normally you might be thinking, oh, so the column strip is always going to be uh, the distance between the two columns divided by two. But now that changes when you come to a setup like this one. In this case, for example, we're going to single out um, this section or strip B. In this case, this is what we did, right? We did B, C, and D, so we need to do D. Let me single out D. In this case, I want you to see what happened. Uh, originally, this side, you the midpoint is at 3,000. And at this side, it's at 1,000 from your column. So how do you create the column strip? So some of you may be thinking, may be thinking, all I have to do is to say, what is 3,000 divided by 2? Then I create a line that is 1,500 from there to that point. And for this side, I create a line that is 1,000 divided by 2, in this case, 500 and offset it to this point, right? And then these become my midpoints. But unfortunately, that is not what you or what they recommend. What they recommend is the column strip is always the place that has to be designed for the most moment. And even when you are reinforcing it, you put more bars in the column strip than in the middle strip. So by essence, the column strip is not very economical. So to create economical designs, what they say is you try and be more non-conservative about it. What you will do is, in this case, you will use the shorter end. So what you will do instead of offsetting this by, let me show you, 1,500 as we did, what you then do is you understand which one is the shorter side. This is the shorter side. And what you did is you offset this by 500. So that is the same thing that you will do. You offset it even to the larger side by 500 as this, right? And this will then automatically become your column strip. And in this case, this is how you do it. This becomes the column strip. And in our case, let me just match the properties and come back. As you can see, let's annotate dimension linear. The column strip, instead of being, um, let's just see what it would have been if we had used 1,500 to go to there. It would have been 2,000 wide. In this case, it becomes 1,000 wide and it becomes symmetrical. So it's always good to have your column strip being symmetrical and that is what they would want to do. Then as you already know, the rest that remains outside the column strip becomes your middle strip. So just to recap in the top, at the top, it will look something like this. The cyan parts become the middle strip and the orange parts become the column strip. And in this case, the cyan part becomes the middle strip, as you can already see. And the orange part becomes the column strip. Same thing repeats even when you have the external strip, this external slab strip. Orange is your column strip and cyan is your middle strip. 
column strip, middle strip, column strip, middle strip, column strip. In this case, as you can see, everything where the columns are bounded, you have the column strip. Wherever the columns are bounded, you have the column strip. Wherever the columns are bounded is the column strip. So whoever is nearest to the columns, you're definitely going to have your column strips. And everything else that is outside, in this case, the green and the cyan do represent the middle strips. So hopefully now, as you may remember, in what we did as we calculated, remember what we did is we started off with the layout, established our midpoints, established the slab strips in the LY and in the LX, and we went to isolate the central strip, and that is what we designed for in the first, and we established the column and the middle strip. And then we took note of the spans, calculated the depth in MathCAD, and then we went to Procon, and I started explaining the rebar to you, so the next thing that we're going to do is hopefully now you have an understanding of what the column strip and the middle strip is. So now we are now taking that knowledge proceeding with the design of everything else. The detailing of all the other things is what we'll just do is we'll just do a mini detailing. Just remember so that when we do the final detailing, we'll remember, okay, we need bars at this point, this direction at certain spacing, certain spacing and at a certain spacing. So thank you very much for tuning in. If this was your first time, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, leave a like. Hopefully now you understand a bit of what column strips and middle strips are. For more information on structural engineering, program and everything that you would want, click in the link in the description box below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Hope you stay safe and don't sneeze.